So welcome back everyone. My name is Echo and I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. In today's Minecraft video, we're back on Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version. But no, we don't have a brand new beta. In fact, in today's video, I have something better than a beta. So before I go over the exciting news in today's video, the reason why I'm on the latest beta is because I've decided to go through all of the 1.18 betas and pull the most important information that Minecraft players should know about going into the full release of 1.18. But check this out. This is Sliced Lime, a Minecraft Java developer. No snapshot today. We are preparing something for tomorrow though, dot, dot, dot. And that is a hint to Minecraft 1.18 pre-release. So it's a very good day for the Minecraft community. Now from here on out, don't expect any major 1.18 betas for the rest of 2021. We're about to head into pre-releases. Now pre-releases for Minecraft Java can last anywhere between 1 and 5 pre-releases, all the way up to 10 to 20 different pre-releases. But during Minecon this year, the developers have said that this update will be releasing towards the end of November, heading into December. Because of course, obviously the developers take Christmas and New Year off. So that's the most important news for today's video. Now, between the pre-releases, Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version, is probably just going to see a bunch of bug fixes and stability fixes from here on out, which I, I have no problem with that. Um, but again, we don't have pre-release on, on Bedrock Edition. So we've got to wait just a little bit longer than Minecraft Java Edition. However, the developers have said they want to release Bedrock Edition and Java Edition side by side. Alrighty, so let's go through all the important changes that you should remember heading into this next update. The first thing I have today is whenever you fully update and try and play a world, this is probably going to pop up, not just for beta players. When the full release uh, is introduced, this says this new update makes your world higher and deeper. It adds more blocks and caves under your current world. So there's more to explore underground. It's basically going to be a prompt just explaining to you what the developers are doing in 1.18. Of course, unless you're crazy, uh, keep this ticked, okay? Backups are super important. They're a lot harder to keep a hold of compared to Java Edition. So my recommendation, before you even head into 1.18, make sure you back up and save your worlds. Super important. The last thing you want to do is lose them. So for anybody who has been around on my YouTube channel for quite some time, you will know that this is my underground survival world. Now, of course, they are changing how far down you can go underground. And again, this takes effect to your favorite worlds as well. This was created, in fact, in the 1.4, uh, sorry, 1.14 betas. This was my uh, beautiful gold room. So as you're aware, they've literally deleted bedrock. Like, I, I sh this should be bedrock in this world. And as you guys know, that has now been removed. Um, so I have the chance to now break into newer caves, lush caves, and things like that. So I'm in like the negatives now. And again, like I said, this is a very, very old created world. And this is going to be the exact same uh, for all of you. Although I think I've struck a little bit unlucky here. And I'm not going to find myself uh, a cave here. But yeah, first thing I wanted to tell you is that again, that your old worlds will be updated with the negative uh, 64. Bedrock deleted. So like I said, uh, no beta today, possibly tomorrow, but I still want to go over some important things that all Minecraft players should know about in this next update. So I've gone through all of the 1.18 betas and pulled what I consider the most important. Things that we love to see as Bedrock players is Minecraft Java vanilla parity. So we've got a couple here. The raid boss bars now decrease whenever a raider takes damage. Raid mobs now despawn after a raid ends if the player moves too far away. And of course, the raid boss bar color changed to red from purple. So I have a village here. Let me show you a couple of examples. 
although the beta text at the top ruins it, uh, the raid bar is now red compared to purple. So just a very simple parity change um, that Bedrock players have always wanted. Let's go and find, let's go and find the mobs. So what they've done, I can show you in real time here, is whenever you kill even just one of these, the bar goes down. Goes down one by one. See that? They're all dying. So when one dies, they all go down. So it gives you a better indication of how many mobs are left. And I've also just noticed that... I, I have no idea where that came from. That literally just started to spread. That's Oh, that's because... Uh, oh, I killed a mob here, didn't I? Okay, well, I wasn't planning on showing you that. But let's um, try and uh, bring this guy up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he gets closer to this and we kill him... Ow. Now, that didn't happen that time. Basically, when a mob dies, this this can happen. Anyway, uh, the raid bar, so much cleaner, so much easier. Oh, let me just finish this raid. Couldn't really show you this one, but again, raid mobs now despawn after a raid ends if the player moves too far away. So if you're not fully prepared for a raid and you're like, nah, I'm out, um, you can just leave the area and the mobs will go away. So here's an interesting one. Vindicators no longer naturally spawn in Illager patrols. So these guys have been demoted. You know, the guys wielding the axes, uh, they're no longer inside uh, Illager patrols. Yes, they are still available in raids, just no longer with the captains anymore. So a bunch more job of parity. Shield blocking animation now plays smoothly. So this is to do with like when you push the shield up. So basically what would happen is for Bedrock players, your shield would be static at this position and then automatically change to this position. There was no like, there was no like smooth animation for it. It's it's a lot smoother now. Um, I know it's a simple change, but it's just, uh, just one that makes Minecraft Bedrock players happy. Again, more parity is always good. So I believe this is already available in the latest Minecraft version, but I've thrown this in here anyway. Players are now able to activate Elytra gliding uh, while moving forward. So this was a request for a very, very long time for Minecraft players. And let me just grab some fireworks here and show you as an example. So we'll go with these. We'll go to forward slash game mode S. So when you jump on the spot, right, and you double jump, now it instantly activates. Previously for the Bedrock version, this would just happen. You would literally have to run and fly this way. It's been requested for a long time. And I know it's already in the game. But it just makes life just so much easier. You know, something so simple as this. You wouldn't think a simple game mechanic like that would be so important to players. But it already is. So I think trolling just got a lot better. The carved pumpkin enchantment glint now only covers the item instead of the entire slot. So yeah, is this uh, enchanted or not? Well, actually, yeah. It has a uh, curse of vanishing. But like on the floor, you can see it doesn't look enchanted. And in your uh, hotbar... The whole entire slot is no longer enchanted, just this. But yeah, do you think like when you're holding this, it should glint? Or should it not? I mean, technically we have curses on it and it could be fun to mess around with your friends because then you got to put it on there, you know? And they got to, especially if you're binding <laughs> and you bind it to a pumpkin. That can be super annoying. You got to kill yourself. One of, if not the biggest parity change in 1.18 is Java Seed Parity. So whether you create a seed in 1.18, on iOS, Android, Windows 10, Xbox, Switch, or PlayStation, the seed is going to look the exact same as the seed on Minecraft Java Edition, which brings Minecraft closer as one because whenever you're searching for a seed, you don't have to specifically type in Minecraft Pocket Edition or Minecraft Bedrock. You just type in Minecraft Seed for 1.18 and they're all pretty much the same. That is huge. Let me show you. So what I'm going to do is create a brand new seed on Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version, or capital letters, Echo Soldier. I'm going to do the same on Java as well, and just see what the overall outcomes are going to be. Let's just uh, fire up this world, and then let me show you. So just for reference, if we go to settings, we're going to have a seed number here, 109, 3219488. So we are going to also run to Minecraft Java and just see what this seed looks like. But I've come to this specific location, which is 0, 120, and 0. Uh, just take a, take, take a closer look at the terrain. And yes, uh, the Java version is pretty much the exact same. Spawn positions are pretty much the exact same. I think they're still doing one or two minor tweaks. 
we'd see parity, but getting this pretty much close together is absolutely huge. Let's switch to Minecraft Java Edition. Alrighty, game mode creative. I'm going to put the exact same game rules on. Uh, not that one. Weather and this, they're done. We're going to go to options and we're just going to type in the exact same as well. Echo Soldier. And let's create it. So this time we're on Minecraft Java Edition, as you can see. I'll show you guys again for clarification. Uh, the biggest key here is, of course, the F3 functionality, which we don't have on uh, Minecraft Bedrock that you're using add-ons. Uh, but regardless, though, like it's basically the exact same. I'm still the same place, 0, uh, 120, and 0, and it looks the exact same. So having universal seed parity for me is absolutely huge to introduce in 1.18 and yeah thought that was uh something i had to add in in today's minecraft video remember this next one when you're fortifying your builds mobs no longer try to path through sweet berry bushes so check this out they've got husks here we've got bushes place them in there get a game mode s bam it's not interested in you he doesn't care about you Pure and simply because he doesn't want to move in the sweet berry bushes because he will take damage trying to get to you. So, yeah, that's a new thing introduced. So, a very good way to stop mobs bothering you is just use a lot of berry bushes. Doesn't matter what mob, it always happens. Something cool coming in the next update is they added a new music disc from Lena Ray titled Other Side. This can be found rarely in stronghold corridor chests or much more rarely in dungeon chests. And that is this one, which I'm pretty sure you probably heard by now. But if you are playing on iOS or Android, you're gonna have to download this via the marketplace. Uh, it's completely free. By the way, you just go to the marketplace, scroll to the bottom and install it. Right, important things we are not getting in the next update is that they have moved Goathorn and skulk blocks behind the toggle. Please enable the toggle to test these work in progress features in your worlds. So you have to enable the experimental code vanilla experiments, I believe. Um, and that is gonna feature this, which is the skulk vein. Um, and if you grab yourself a hoe, we got a game mode, uh, I think it's S, you can harvest these. You get the XP as well. So basically when I killed that mob before, uh, it was consumed by this and get a little bit of XP from it. So you do have these. We also have these, the actual skulk. We've got this, which is the skulk catalyst, which I believe is meant to have like a vibration on it. And then you've got this one as well, which is the shrieker. Has this like crazy shrieking sound and you've already seen the skulk. Um, and of course, I forgot to mention goat horn. This is now locked behind the... Oh, that's really cool. I love that. The darkness effect, right? Yeah. Uh, the goat horn, which is this, is locked behind experimental because these... Well, at least all of the uh, skulk blocks are not coming until 1.19. The goat horn, we actually don't know what's happening with that. So these are not in 1.18. Mostly 1.19. Sad day for Pocket Edition players. They have removed old world type option from create new world screen. Now, locked old worlds to the base game version of 1.17.40, which is one of the newer versions of Minecraft. So you can't make the OG worlds anymore. Just kind of sad. Existing old world types will still be playable, but will not be updated with 1.18 features. So as you know, when creating a brand new world, we had infinite, we had flat, and we had the older worlds, where it was a certain size. It was a super, super tiny. It's now gone. I think this is just simply to reduce file size of Minecraft, and that's one way they've decided to do it. Kind of sad. Updated or distribution to make branch mining deep down more rewarding. Now, I don't know what the best level for mining diamonds is in 1.18. Uh, but basically, if you like to strip mine, it's still going to be possible and it's going to be rewarding as well. And then this next one is quite important as well. 
Players with higher than recommended render distance settings are now prompt to change it to recommended value render distance default and max settings have updated for better performance. So let me show you. I'm using a pretty high-end PC. A couple of things that you're going to see here is number one, uh, it's in video. Where is it? Video. Number one is that you have more options here, right? Like it literally goes to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's rather than going up in like twos or fours, that's one big change. Now you also have this as well. It says this option can only be edited while playing. Uh, not that one. Sorry, that's wrong. There's meant to be another one here. I think it'll pop up. There you go. You see that notification. So this is recommended for me on my device. 45, which is insane. I would never play at that. If I go to the next one, it says this high render distance could cause a low frame rate crashes or, un or other unexpected uh, behavior. So again, it does have a recommended for you. If you're playing in survival, I think 20 is perfect. I typically play like 16 to 20. Um, but yeah. A pretty good change so i really don't know if anybody made it to the end of today's video if you did let me know i just thought i would do an updated video on important things because we are getting close of course i will keep you updated if we get a new beta tomorrow or a new snapshot or a pre-release and more importantly i will keep you all updated on the official release so have a great day stay beautiful and i'll see you all in the next video goodbye